Love and health form the foundation and pillars that support all that you do to create fulfillment and success in every aspect of your life. Love Within Us guides our paths while our health enables us to drive forward. The two are inseparable and vital for growth and reaching your fullest potential. Welcome to Love and Health in America with Dr. Dewey Lee and Jens Johnson. Dr. Lee is an international speaker, author, inventor of the Diamond Matrix, and medical director of Advanced Surgical Arts. The way I see my role is that I'm a guide. Jens Johnson, the Mindset Master, is a best-selling author, speaker, and executive managing director of Dallas E-Women Network. Please join them and explore all the facets of love and health to achieve and live your abundant life. Here are your hosts, Dr. Dewey Lee and Jens Johnson. Another episode of Love and Health in America. Now, we've got a really, really great show for you today because uh -huh. we're going to be talking about the brain. <laughs> exactly. We're going to be talking about <laughs> the most important part. The, the most important part. And I don't know about uh -huh. y'all, but, um, and I told Dr. Lee, I said, yeah. Dr. Lee, we got to talk about some of the crazies. Mm -hmm. And it all starts in the brain, folks. Yes, definitely. Um, definitely. Now, here's another thing that we're going to do today <laughs> is I've got my phone here. And if you've got a question, a specific question that you would like to ask Dr. Lee, send, put it in the comment box. And I'll ask him for you. So, Dr. Lee, yes. as, as we know, you have created uh -huh. um, the Diamond Matrix. Yes. Uh -huh. And one of the components of the Diamond Matrix mm -hmm. is it's the brain. The brain, the brain health. Yeah. That's and, the foundation. That's at the bottom. And so, yeah. let's talk about mm -hmm. the foundation of the yes, brain exactly. because whether we realize it or not, we've got a lot of. of People trying to manipulate our brain. Oh, you constantly. And I told I'm the Dr. Full, Lee, full I said, Dr. Assault. Lee, we got to talk about this today. <laughs> We're going to talk about it today. We're going to talk about it. So let's yeah. jump into yeah. uh -huh. the, what you do mm -hmm. with the brain. Okay. So what I want to do today for everybody out there is, <laughs> it's going to look like a little classroom, but I've shortened up my lectures on brain health. I call the spec scan. And what I want to go over and, and you know, hopefully do a little teaching today is to kind of let you know how the brain works and the kind of tools that I use to figure out how you can actually see the brain. Because one, one of the things that people kind of get hung up on the brain is, well, we don't know what's going on. You know, people get MRIs and CT and those kind of results that, you know, people know all the time. But question has to do with how do we know how the brain is working? You know, what are the functionalities of the brain and how do we actually, can we actually see that? And so I have a tool called a spec scan and I use that to really analyze the functionality of the different parts of the brain. And that really gives me a clue to what's going on that may be associated with different conditions like ADD, depression, anxiety, and all the kind of stuff that people go through. And I just want to go through this really quickly and then start to do a little quick slideshow. And after that, we can talk about some more and, you know, uh, about how I use this information to treat people. So, Chris, if you can start the slideshow. So let's go on to the next one, spec brain scans. And uh, so it's, it's a diamond matrix that uh, Jens mentioned. So you have the seven components there and, you know, nutrition, lifestyle, et cetera. And the, and the B at the bottom is brain health and that's what we're going to be concentrating on today. And I put that on the bottom on the purpose because it really serves as a foundation for the diamond matrix and everything else that goes on inside. So next one. So I kind of you know, came up with this, this term called the holistic health of the W because it really is entire encompassment of the various parts of health. So again, brain health is foundation of health and then I use a spec scan for looking at the organic brain function and really it's going to give you an objective view of the functionality of the brain and the different deficits. And as I mentioned before, it is associated with ADD, ADHD, dementia, traumatic brain injury, addiction, so many different things that we go through every day. And the reason this is important uh, is because you know, as we get older, uh, cognition declines, and whether we want it or not. And I'm personally going through it myself. It's like, oh my God, oh, <laughs> this is not we good, don't want right? This to <laughs> so I'm doing everything I can to fight that process, you know. But understanding what's going on uh, with uh, declining and the changes with age is really important. And then you know, figure out a way to uh, optimize your brain function regardless of your age. And there are ways to do this to keep your brain working sharp and crystal clear all the way through your old age, old or mature age, I should say, with various supplements and diet and lifestyle and things like that. And that's the whole point of evaluating the brain uh, health. Next one. Next slide. Okay, so the brain is the most complex organ. I mean, it you know, sits up on the top and, you know, there are multiple different things. And the way, and I don't want to go through this complex slide, but 
it really demands a lot from the body. 15% of cardiac output, 20% of oxygen, and 25% of glucose, that goes to the brain. You know, it's very demanding and really is the most uh, important area. And the way I explain uh, the brain to my patients when they come into the, you know, to see me is that it's a little like a car engine. You know, unless you're driving down the road, you're in, we're driving our Ferraris, right? Driving down the road and you come to a stop because all of a sudden something stops, you open up the hood and, you know, the engine itself looks great. You know, it's like nothing coming out, there's nothing leaking, etc. But the engine is made up of thousands of parts, and the brain is made up of billions of neurons and trillions of connections, and it's very, very complicated. So it's not just the entire structure itself, but it's actually the different parts that may not be functioning properly. Maybe there's something little, you know, valve that's broken inside the engine that causes it to stop. Uh, similarly, in the brain, there may be different areas in the brain that specialize in other, uh, other tasks that are not functioning properly, and that causes different kind of problems to occur. And that really is the whole idea is to figure out, you know, what are those areas and how do you actually detect those kind of things and, and obviously you don't know what's going on inside your brain exactly so it's it's not like you know you're gonna go and do an x-ray right you don't know what's going on inside but mm -hmm. what is going on inside <laughs> in your brain dramatically impacts your quality it, of life. Everything. It impacts everything. You know, it's just it's sort of an oxymoron. It's a little like, you know, hand trying to fix your own hand, you know, mm -hmm. if you're a surgeon. Brain trying to fix your own brain. It's like you have to kind of think internally, and that's kind of what we're doing. And the only way to really fix that is to be able to see it. Right. And for now, spec scan is really the only way to really be able to see the functioning of the brain, and that really is the key. So next one is the next slide. <clears throat> next one. So expect, and, you know, time. So why do we worry about the brain health? Because if you look at those pictures, the one on the left is nice, smooth, homogeneous brain. That's a nice young brain. That's We're, what that's what my that's brain. That's what we all like. want. I have <laughs> exactly. no doubt. No doubt. Exactly. I have no doubt. That's what my brain looks and like. And unfortunately, as we get older, we get a little irregular, and those little areas that are spots, and sometimes we call them holes. You don't really have holes, but these are the areas where the, the there's a little deficit in the blood flow, and that's kind of what happens as you get older. And now, what now, causes those holes? Well. Well, there's a lot of things. Could Metab it be your spouse? Could be spouse. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about the spouse thing later. <laughs> Could it be your different spouse? Spouse, stress, work, uh, different metabolic disease, diabetes, medications, all kinds so, of things, right? So all different yeah, things. So many things. Okay. Everything that goes into but the body. But all those holes impact the functionality Precisely. of the brain. Because those are the areas that the blood is not getting there. Okay. Okay. So next one. <clears throat> And then, so how do we decline, how do we actually figure out why it's declining and how do you minimize that or even prevent the decline, actually even reverse it? So the whole idea is diagnose it, treat it, and then maintaining the health. Next one. So, so there are different ways to look at it. So anatomic imaging, uh, MRI and CT, which we know, everybody's familiar with that, that kind of tells you how it looks. And pretty much everybody that I see in my clinic for the brain evaluation, they all have pretty much normal MRI and CT, unless they have some history of surgery or trauma. So that's not really doesn't help us very much. It's like opening up the hood and looking at the engine and say, hey, the engine looks great. Why isn't it running? <laughs> okay? So that's kind of what the anatomic thing is for. So it's the functionality that's truly important. Why is it not working? Not necessarily what it looks like, but why is it not working? There are different things like PET and functional MRI, but they really don't give you the kind of information that I use in terms of the spec scan, and that's what we're going to concentrate on. Next. So this is a spec scanner. It's, I have one in my clinic. It's a small little, looks like a tiny little miniature CT scan, but they have cameras out there. You lie on the table. It makes a little whispering noise and goes around and takes a nice picture. And what we're doing is actually looking at the blood flow pattern in the brain. And we're translating the blood flow pattern into function of various areas in the brain. Next. So here's an example of a nice normal brain. Cotton okay? candy. So, cotton candy, yeah, you remember. Yeah. Cotton <laughs> so candy. I always kind of use the analogy, like if you all go to you know, different carnivals and fairs, you can, there's always a guy making cotton candy. And there's nothing like a fresh cotton candy right outside of it. You know, you get a little stick. This nice fluffy cloud is sitting on a stick. It's very beautiful and soft and all well around it, right? So a nice healthy brain looks like that on a spec scan. Really beautiful, and, and how smooth. Old, how old is this person? This person's are in, the, in the probably early 20s. Okay. Early 20s, you know. So, right. But you, even you can be older and have this kind of brain. Mm -hmm. You can be I very know. healthy. Mine is that way. Yes, I know. I have no doubt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So that means every little tiny micro uh, vessels are filled mm -hmm. with blood flow. That's right, why everything okay. is so homogeneous and smooth, which means every neuron and cell is getting the nutrition it needs. So the brain is functioning at its peak and we really don't have much functional deficit. That's what we're doing. So, mm -hmm. so I want everybody watching this to be envious of this beautiful, homogeneous, fluffy cotton candy brain right. because that means a really nice, healthy brain. Okay, next. 
So what happens? Unfortunately, things happen in life, and we go through different uh, effects you know, on the brain, and different uh, abnormal changes occur in different uh, areas of the brain. And that sometimes translates into different conditions we have, things like ADD, depression, uh, you know, PTSD, trauma, dementia, bipolar disorder, OCD, uh, the list goes on and on and on. And all those different uh, conditions are associated with different functional deficits in various parts of the brain. So what we're doing actually is looking at the functionality and translating it back and associating that with various conditions. Right. And you know, I mean, here's the thing. Next slide. You, you're looking at ADHD, mm -hmm. depression, addiction. Yeah. Um, those are major issues yes. that people are facing. Mm -hmm. And if, if they had this brain scan, they would clearly understand mm -hmm. what part of the brains are not getting the blood flow, yeah. and there there are things you can do to help. Exactly. That's the whole point of this. Mm -hmm. That really right. is the whole point of this. And this is the first thing you know, that people who come and see me and go through this evaluation, for them, it really is the first time they're actually seeing their brain and how the brain is functioning. Right. And it does a couple of things. Number one, it, it objectifies it, so they realize it's not all in my head, no pun intended, right, right, because it right, is in your right. head, but I mean, people say it's not imagining it, you right. know? Because sometimes people go through this, and they go through this, you know, uh, almost trauma of evaluation, 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 and treatment, and treatment, and treatment, and nothing changes, and you wonder, what is going on? Am well, I crazy? it's that hopelessness. Exactly. You know, and, that, and that's the thing, is if you're, if you're suffering with depression, if you're suffering with issues, you really do start to think, there's some, I'm crazy, there's something <laughs> wrong. And listen, I tell people all the time, everybody's at least a quarter crazy. A little bit, yeah, you have to be. Otherwise at least a quarter learn. crazy, yeah. and I think, that's, I think that might be generous, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you're, if you're suffering, there, it means there's something wrong. You yeah. know, that's one of the things I say all the time is your body is such a tremendous machine and when there is a problem, your body will alert you of course. and let you yeah, know. Of course. And so it's does not the same in your head. The there's something the going thing. on. Right. And this, of course, this, this type of, of treatment or mm -hmm. this type of um, scan allows you as a physician to be able to hone in exactly what is the issue. Exactly, yeah. That, that's the whole point mm -hmm. of it. So let's go on. Let's go to the next one. So here's an example of uh, ADD, ADHD. Okay, so what's interesting is uh, in the baseline scan, I do two phases. One is when, when your brain is resting, another one when the brain is active. What's interesting is that when you're resting, there are several areas of a bunch of little holes. I'm going to call it holes, but they're not holes. Uh, and then when you're active, actually it decreases even more. All, all the holes get bigger, more diffuse, and this is sort of, sort of a tragedy because when you're concentrating, that's when you need your brain to be functioning at its capacity. Instead, by looking at the scan, when you're doing that, the brain actually shuts off and the blood flow is decreasing. Okay, that's so why you're not able to concentrate and you're all over the place. That's your typical scenario where people go through ADD, right? Okay, so that's crazy. So <laughs> you, now you can so, see that. Now so you can see what's happening. What you're saying is, mm -hmm. When when somebody is has these holes in their brain, yeah, and they they start on a task, they right. want to start working, they want to start um, doing some type of like work where working, they need focus, projects, writing, That's all kinds of things. That's when the right? blood level it's drops. falling down. Yes. Oh my god. See, but thing is, can you go back to the slide again? But this, that slide shows you exactly what's happening. When you're resting, your brain is actually more filled in. Mm -hmm. Okay, but when you're working, concentrating. That area that you know that de determines your focus and, and your concentration is actually shutting off. Right. So no wonder your mind is wandering everywhere. You can yeah. stay on task. That, I mean, okay? that's just a that's a mean trick. I know that's what happens. That's but a what's mean interesting trick. is on the third slide, on the on the right side, we put patient on Adderall that actually changes the blood fat flow pattern and the brain. So you can kind of see on Adderall, there's significant improvement mm -hmm. in the overall feeling of the, of the brain. So your brain actually functions better. That's why some of these medications actually help you concentration because so, it changes the blood flow. Pattern. Okay, so the third, the mm -hmm. third picture, picture on uh -huh. the right, yeah. that's with Adderall, Adderall with someone working. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it, there's a significant difference. It's, yes, yeah. significant okay. I don't difference. want to go into all the biology because it's, you know, that's too much for this right. talk, but there is definite effect of medications. And you know, I tend to stay away from medications, but I do use them once in a while. Mm -hmm. But even the other stuff that I use that are non-medication really do affect the brain, improve the functionality and blood flow. That's how people get better. Okay. Yeah, but this is a really good example of people seeing this. So when they come into the clinic and get the scan done, and I show them this is what's happening, they realize, oh, now I get it. Mm -hmm. No wonder I'm going through this problem because 
because my brain is shutting off when I need it the most. Right. Okay. So okay. Next slide. An example of depression. This is a 17-year-old with depression. So the, this is a different kind of scan. It's actually showing the actual internal parts of the brain, and the picture on the bottom actually is showing the outside, the, the cerebral cortex of the brain. Okay. So what's interesting is that you're seeing a lot of activity in the areas that are associated with different emotional uh, uh, stability and depression. Uh, the one in the middle is called the thalamus, and has a lot to do with the emotional barometer. And on the bottom, you can see again a lot of big holes in the frontal lobe and temporal lobe, which actually has a lot to do with um, mood stability, all those areas are actually shutting off because you're not getting the flow. So no wonder you know, this person, 17-year-old, is depressed because your brain is not functioning enough to keep, you, keep your mood up. Okay? Right. So here's an example of why uh, different areas of the brain are uh, um, you know, resulting in this type of depression. You know, depression is not a diagnosis. You know, people use depression all the time. Well, I'm depressed, I have this, and people give medication on depression. Depression is a symptom. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, somehow, the way we treat people, uh, we use it as a, as, a, you know, as a diagnosis and we give antidepressants instead of really figuring out what is the cause of your depression? I right. mean, you know, if your thyroid is low, mm -hmm. nothing to do with the brain. If your thyroid is low, hypothyroidism, you right. can get depressed. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, do but you just treat you, the brain, give anti antidepressants? No. So, but would you, so say somebody, say somebody does have a thyroid issue, yeah. and, and they are depressed, and they're not quite sure what's going on. Sure. But they want to come in because they want to, to see what mm -hmm. is happening yeah. in the brain. Yeah. You're going to see in the in the scans the impact of the the loss of the flow. But can you see if somebody's depressed from the scan and then say, "Hey, look, we can." I mean, how do you know it's the thyroid? That's what well, I'm that's part of, the, part of the analysis. Yeah, part of the you know part of the evaluation, not only the scan, but there's right. pretty extensive history taking. Okay. You know, evaluation and talking about hormones and all those kind of things. So I cover all those kind of things as part of the initial evaluation. Okay. It's, it doesn't just come in here and get a brain scan. Well, right, I got There's you. a lot I of got, interaction and okay, talking, you. and you know, this is a pretty complicated process. I know you're you know? <laughs> very comprehensive, Dr. Lee. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> what I love about you. You're very comprehensive. Oh, thank you. You yeah. know, and that's one of the things that I I know sets mm -hmm. you apart from yeah. so many other people is when somebody comes in to mm -hmm. see you, mm -hmm. you have you're looking at the entire picture. Yeah, trying to and yeah. and you have the the medical training mm -hmm. to look at the entire yeah. picture. Yes. Where uh, most physicians, you know, nothing wrong with that, but most physicians are very specialized, mm -hmm. but you have a lot of specialized training, training in, in a lot areas. of different areas. Yeah, I try to use all these different tools right. in the toolbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next one. And addiction, this is something that is rampant, you know, and especially with now with coronavirus, people isolated, all those kind of things, use of alcohol, drugs, and you know, even abuse, and all those kind of things skyrocket. We don't talk about it much, unfortunately, but this is really a, a tremendous problem. And you know, we know the opioid epidemic we're going through. Really, I think, that, I think President Trump has made some in inroads in that, but it's such a huge problem. But, so we're going to talk about addiction because obviously this is a very, very critical uh, part of brain dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So next to the next slide. So here's an example of addiction. So here's a healthy brain. Mm -hmm. We saw that before. Picture That's on seven the right. Years old. Seven years of methadone use. Oh, seven and some years. Some prior of, oh heroin. My gosh. Look at what happens to the brain. Oh my god. I mean, gosh. there's very and little is that brain. At rest? <laughs> It doesn't is that matter. It doesn't matter if it's rest or not. This is what the brain oh. is. So think of how little brain functionality is left oh, it's so after sad. seven. It is sad. This is it's what happens so with sad. addiction. Yeah. But what's amazing is that if you stop, it'll come back. The brain comes back. Right. The that's brain, the amazing thing that, that's about what, it. The brain actually can heal itself. Mm. Yeah. And even with smoking. I have so many other examples. I just don't have time for it, all of it. Right. But what is really amazing is that you can see that there's kind of a tremendous deficit in the brain functionality that is low. But once you go through the treatment and make the brain healthier, you will start to come back towards healthy brain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next slide. And then that example. So marijuana. We just uh, we just came out in the uh, newspaper. Several states passed, you know, recreational marijuana. Right. Okay. It's going to sweep the entire country. Eventually, right. Texas will become that too as well. But look at this. 18-year-old, three years, four times a week marijuana. Look at the uh, deficit and, and the brain. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at all the holes. Right. Right. 28 years. Eight years of heavy methadone use. And then the third one, long-term alcohol use. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask you. Yeah. D is alcohol worse for the brain? It's horrible for the brain. Yes, yeah, so, you know that. that well, <laughs> it is it, horrible for the it brain. It's me, poison. <laughs> well, it makes me so sad yeah, because yeah. you know I I know a lot of people. Obviously. I mean, we all have a little I drinks mean, here and there. I know, obviously, but, but I'm I'm thinking about you know 
the abuse of alcohol. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. you know, and just the the abuse that alcohol has on the body. So when someone is an alcoholic, yes. it's just, it's devastating on the body. Now, do you have the same um, damage caused by marijuana use to the body as you do at alcohol? Similar. I think it affects different areas okay. of the brain. Mm -hmm. Can you go back to the slide again, please? So, so if you look at this, this is sort of the... Um, I don't know the right word for it. It's sort of an oxymoron or you know, something that goes back and forth. If you look at this, let's go back to the other one. Um, the, uh, yeah, so this is unfortunately what's happening. So if you get to a certain point of having this kind of a brain deficit, okay, and you realize I can't keep doing this, mm -hmm. I have to save myself, quote unquote, but your brain is so damaged, the areas that give you the motivation and the understanding and, and the drive to improve yourself, you that is it. damaged. Yeah. I mean, you still have it, but it's just it's not so that damaged, strong. Right. So even though you want to heal yourself, that motivation to allow you to go and heal yourself becomes low. Mm. So you constantly keep falling back. And that's the tragedy behind this kind of a level of addiction. You're, you're damaging your own self to the point where you cannot heal yourself. Well, and the thing you that's know? scary, too, is, is I just think about with this isolation how alcohol sales oh, are up through the roof crazy, because people crazy. are self-medicating exactly, themselves. Exactly, because that's all they have. And then, you know, people are in this state of fear <laughs> because how the the world has politicized yeah. the the health situation exactly. that we're in. Right. And so, you know, what what is the negative impacts of all of this craziness happening in the world? on our brains. Oh my God. Well, you know, brain reacts to in the environment. Right. Okay? If you have constant onslaught of negative energy coming to you, your brain is going to adjust and adapt to the negative energy. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some, some of us who are strong enough to fight that and maintain your integrity and self, but you know, even those people eventually wear out. You know, right. There's only so much that we all do. But if you can find something that's positive, that will reinforce the positive energy of your brain as well. So mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying. We're in this tremendous pandemic and you know, the way we're, our country is responding, and I have my own opinions about all of those kind of things too. But you know, that negativity, this dark winter that we're talking about that's coming, you know, right. I mean, that's going to have even more effect a bad effect and in this country, not only individually, for the entire nation, to be that, you know, draconian about this, this pandemic, instead of finding a, a positive direction to figure out a way to get ourselves out and, you know, totally find a positive paths to live our lives in spite of this pandemic. Right. Okay. And that's why it's so important that we realize if, as, as human beings, as individuals, that we can't buy in to the negative exactly. narrative, the narrative that has oh, yeah, been yeah. that truly is shoved down our it's throats. It's brainwashing. It's brainwashing. It's, it's shoved yeah. down your throat. It's sho <laughs> you can't watch the mainstream yeah. media. Yeah. The mainstream yeah. media is the enemy of the people. I mean it just <laughs> yeah. is. I agree. And and what people yeah. don't realize is People, the, they know this. Mm -hmm. They know that put, just putting negative and negative. In, they know these are these are tactics oh, that have no, been it's, going it's, around, yeah, along yeah, yeah. around the world for hundreds and thousands Thousand, of yes. years. Yeah. You know the negative propaganda to get people to be scared and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. Of course, what I do as as the mindset master, as as a coach, as a as a, mind, a mastermind facilitator, sure. is it's getting people to focus focus on the positive, right. getting people to focus on love, mm -hmm. getting people to focus on on what you can do because exactly. we have a lot that we can do. And I'm telling you, turning off mainstream <laughs> media That's the first and, thing. Yeah. And, and, and not believing that. And the other thing I say all the time to people is, listen, I don't care what side of the aisle somebody is yeah, on. Right. Um, you know, we, we're more alike than we are different. Mm -hmm. And we need to love. We need to love one another. Yeah, find we, common ground. Co you know? Find common ground, yeah. and we need to. We need to see. We need to see things yes. like what you're sharing with us sure. right now, because mm -hmm. it's it's detrimental mm -hmm. to your to your brain. Yeah, you, well, no, not only your brain, your entire body and self, yes. and your soul, and everything. So, mm -hmm. but uh, that's exactly right. So, mm -hmm. I have a few more slides. So let's let's keep going. Uh -huh. We can kind of get through. Let's go to the next one. 
And then, um, so this is a traumatic brain injury, obviously same kind of picture from probably sports injury or motorcycle accident, things like that. But again, you can see the physical def defects. But actually, a lot of these people, unless they actually had physical change, the brain scan, like MRI, will look pretty good. But because of the trauma, there's significant difference in the functionality of the brain. That's what this scan shows. Go ahead, next. So other conditions, PTSD, anxiety, dementia, et cetera. So many other things we can do. But one thing I put this in couples therapy because we talked about this before. And one of the things that is sort of an interesting use of this is, you know, a lot of people go through marital issues and all kinds of, you know, difficulties because, you know, this, you know, passionate relationships are not the easiest thing to live with, right? So you sometimes, can say that again. <laughs> sometimes people have different functional deficits as a couple. And sometimes these functional deficits always cause a clash rather than harmony. Mm -hmm. And so an interesting idea is, you know, scan the couple one at a time and then figure out, okay, Can you, you, have a, you have a deficit in this area and you have a deficit in this area. And unfortunately, these deficits don't do very well together. I really want to do this, Dr. <laughs> Lee. I really want to do it's sort this. Of anyway, it's sort of a fun idea, but it actually is very practical and it has real validity to it. It's not something that's fluff. Mm -hmm. But to be able to really kind of analyze the functionality of, you know, the wife and the functionality of the husband and really kind of figure out, okay, because of your functionalities, you react to these stresses differently. Mm -hmm. And that those kind of reactions and how you adapt to them may cause a lot of stress between the two of you, depending on your interactions. Right. I mean, we all know about how, you know, different people push each other's buttons, right? right exactly. We know what the buttons to push That's right. for, your, for your loved one because uh -huh. we know them so well. <laughs> well, okay, so since that those buttons come from understanding the functionalities of each other. Right. I mean, we're looking at the scan, but we just know as people, okay, he's going to say this, she's going to say that, I'm going to say it this way to make her mad or something. You know, we all do right. this all the time. So, so people who are really going through some difficulties in, uh, in a relationship, relationships, this may be something interesting to kind of go through, figure mm -hmm. out, okay, I have this, I have that, you have that. Let's see how we can harmonize, right. improve those areas of deficits. Maybe they'll allow us to get along better. Right. And, you know, rekindle the romance and love and all those kind of things too. You so. know, and I love that you're, you're talking about this <laughs> yeah. because one of the things, and, you know, I don't... One of the things I've said when I first met you, and yeah. we started talking about the brain, and you started to, to, to share and mm -hmm. impart your wisdom, that's the first thing I said, I want my husband to get his brain scan. <laughs> I want my husband to get his brain scan. I want, yeah. you know, um, of course, obviously, having both sure. people yeah. do it would be phenomenal because, to your point, um, look, if, you're, if you have struggles, yeah. And you're not dealing with the specific cause because yeah. you don't know it. Exactly. You're always going to have struggles. I know. You don't know why you're fighting. You're always you know? going to have struggles. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. And to be able to identify yeah. what those are. And, you know, another thing just popped into my brain <laughs> here is here we are in November. And for a lot of people, this is open enrollment time. Sure. And um, I know that, well, I shouldn't say, what what is... Does insurance pay for this? Mm -hmm. Is what this I want one? to know. Well, it kind of does. Uh -huh. I, uh, for me, uh, it. It's, it's so variable, right? So I just uh, um, I just accept cash. I uh -huh. have a set price for it, right. and then I give them all the diagnostic you know papers and whatnot. So everybody files for their own insurance, mm -hmm. and they get back whatever the insurance pays. Right. Them. So if you have great insurance, you get pretty much almost all of it back. Right. If you have crappy insurance, then you're going to get a little bit back. But so. you know, one thing I was thinking about because this is open enrollment time mm -hmm. is um, a lot of people there. There's a second in, uh, insurance, a yeah. secondary insurance, right, right. and if if this is something that somebody would be interested in, mm -hmm. and you talk with a, a health insurance uh, person, a lot of times you can get a secondary insurance plan policy oh, really? for a given like year oh, where wow. they would, even if your primary insurance would only pay for a little bit, or maybe your primary mm -hmm. insurance isn't all that great, yeah. and it wouldn't pay for very much at all, but you had the secondary maybe. insurance policy that would pay for 100% yeah. of right, it. Right, right. Um, and you say, hey, look, you know, we've, we're in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're we're get things are are not normal for us. Right. You're stressed out. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are having problems <laughs> with your spouse, and you wanted to do this for 2021. Sure. This would really be the time that's, that's to look idea. into that idea. secondary sure. insurance. Right. And um, I've been, I know so many people we'll that that's that. what they do for a living. So if you are interested well, great whatsoever, yeah, that's great not idea. only do we have the man <laughs> with the plan to to do the the to scans, the scan evaluation, right? but yeah. you know. 
know, reach out to us. Yeah. Put a, a, your name in the comment box. We can get you connected mm -hmm. with somebody that could talk about that sure. secondary That's a insurance great idea. policy. That's a great idea. Because you know, you know, I don't know about mm -hmm. you know about other people, but for my husband and I, we've got five kids, mm -hmm. sure. and um, we know, you know, there are some <laughs> things that you can elect to do, right. other things that you can't. Sure. But let me tell you what, the stress that people have been under oh, yeah. in 2020, it's, it's I think just, everybody should get their brain scanned. <laughs> I, so. I really do. Yeah, so it's a, it's a definite Definitely. way that they can make that happen. I know. Okay. So let's go on. I want to talk to talk a little bit about uh, next next one, um, What you know, how your brain can change. This is the next one. So I actually can go from, you know, very, very uh, dysfunctional brain to actually fairly healthy, much more functional brain. And brain actually has the plasticity and the ability to actually change and improve itself. And, and that's great you news. Know, this, yeah, this, uh, that's the only reason I do this, because scanning is fantastic. Looking at all those scans are great. But if you can't do anything to improve it, it's sort of just What's an exercise of fertility. Right. So, but you can actually do this. So next slide. <clears throat> There are different types of treatments. So, so here's one, obviously, abstinence from bad things, like, you know, one year of alcohol and drug-free. Look at the difference between the mm -hmm. left and the right on the top picture. Another one on the bottom, substance abuse versus one year alcohol and drug-free. So just by not doing the bad things to your brain, actually brain can improve, right. which is fantastic. And you can do other things as well. Next slide. And then, you know, we know about hyperbaric oxygen chamber, improving the oxygenation of the brain. For those of you who are not, who are not familiar, hyperbaric is actually an oxygen chamber. The, you, the, the, you can sit in this tube, they increase the atmospheric pressure, and you're actually having 100% oxygen coming in. So you're, you're getting a, a very, very high dose of oxygen for a short period of time that improves the oxygenation of the, your entire body, and certainly including the brain. It has a tremendous benefit in terms of uh, reclaiming a lot of the functionality of the brain as well. So you can see the before and after picture uh, from hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Okay, I want to ask you a question. Yeah, sure. So, <clears throat> wearing the mask does that impact the amount of oxygen that? You're yeah, it receiving? does decrease it. It does okay. decrease it, but I don't think it's to a point where it's really obviously. If you wore it, you know, kind of nonstop for eighteen hours, I wouldn't advise that because right. a lot of people have a lot of different problems with it. But for the short time that we go through in and out of the you know okay. stores and kind of things that we do, mm -hmm. uh, that really is not a problem. Right. Uh, I mean, sometimes when I'm operating, I'm, I'm wearing down a mask for five six hours okay. for a long case. So, but you know, it's not going to really affect right. you that much. So, yeah. Next. Next one. <clears throat> Again, uh, treatment, uh, this is with medication. So ADD and anger issues, you can see before and after. Uh, in, the, in the top, you have the pre-treatment, a lot of the areas of deficits. On the bottom, with uh, Adderall and uh, Decapo with, uh, for uh, temporal control, you can see the difference uh, in the brain. It's not perfect, obviously, mm -hmm. but certainly significantly improved with uh, treatment, and that is reflected in the change in the flow. Go ahead, mm -hmm. next slide. Uh, depression, anxiety, same thing, you know, uh, antidepressant medications. This one person actually went through EMDR uh, a tr a therapy. It's non medical, mm -hmm. it's actually exercise. So it's a combination of uh, different kind of medications as well as exercise. Uh, I, I, I use a lot of supplements and non pharmacological treatment. That's just my inclination right. to treat people, and, and that's how I'd rather uh, bring about positive change rather than putting them on a bunch of drugs. And I just don't, you know, believe in too much pharmacology. Right. You're fighting the sec you know, secondary effects of these drugs more than sometimes the primary desire. So um, anyway. Makes next sense. Slide. Yeah. Makes sense. Next slide. So it really is the foundation of holistic health. And uh, so this really has to do with really for people to visualize the functionality of the brain for the first time probably in their lives. And that allows to really uh, finding out and diagnosing uh, what's going on, the different areas of deficits and imbalance in the brain function that allows you to kind of find the right kind of treatment. Because different supplements affect different areas of the brain. Mm -hmm. And by knowing, you know, this information, I can kind of recommend and, and do, quote unquote, prescribe uh, these kind of supplements and therapies to target certain areas of the brain. Some people have problems with the temporal lobe. Some have problems with basal ganglia, which gives you anxiety. Some people have the problem with the frontal lobe, which leads to ADD, ADHD, and procrastination. So we can target all those areas areas and give you different kind of treatment patterns, you know, to affect that. And again, the whole point of this is the idea of neuroplasticity in a sense that the brain is plastic and is elastic mm -hmm. and can adapt and change and improve. So that's the really uh, the idea behind this. Next right. slide. 
So again, the idea of brain envy, okay? At 60 years old, you can have Alzheimer's. If you have, if you have sleep apnea, being overweight, lack of oxygen, we just talked about that. Chronic def oxygen deficit can affect the brain like this. So uh, I, I kind of downplayed a little bit with mask. I mean, if you just really overdo the mask, you can have something similar to the, like this happen. So it will mm -hmm. affect you. So hopefully the whole mask mandate or whatever will not really come to fruition, but I'm sure there's a big debate about that. And then the right slide is a healthy uh, uh, brain. So this is a 60-year-old person with different kind of conditions and how the brain function changes. That is crazy. Depending on this. Isn't that amazing? That, so, I mean, yeah. what what's so crazy is when you look at the Alzheimer's mm -hmm. brain yeah. and you just look at how deteriorated oh, it huge. is. Yeah. And so what I want to know is, okay, if, <laughs> if you had a brain scan when you were younger, could it could you see that there's a potential um, risk for you to get Alzheimer's mm -hmm. in the future? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's a, there are a couple of signs that kind of give you a clue. Okay. Uh, almost even up to almost eight, nine, ten years before this would happen. Right. There's a clue that you can see is that you know there's a risk of this happening. Okay. And, and you can and actually do as preventive measures. That's amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. And then the second scan mm -hmm. was the scan of somebody, somebody with the sleep apnea. With sleep apnea. Yeah. And then so overweight. All, overweight. So yeah. you so know, he doesn't sleep really get breathing well. Well, you know? and here's the thing: is what people need to realize. Your sleep is important. It's everything. <laughs> it's, your sleep is so important, yeah. and that's another yes. thing when people are stressed. Yeah. They don't sleep, sleep well. well right. They don't sleep well. We mm. need to be sleeping well, I folks. Know, you I need know. to be not Same. worrying. Exactly. You need to be exercising. You need to you. be taking care of yourselves and take your vitamins, work out, turn off the mainstream <laughs> media. Yes. I mean, I mean, honestly, because yeah. if, if you get sucked in, yeah. if you get sucked into this, plan to this propaganda this to this negativity yes. you are harming oh, yourself yeah. all the you are damaging your brain yes. you're harming your body no. we can't we can't get sucked into it well i mean there's a whole stress cycle you know uh -huh. and um we talk about exactly what you're talking about right stress so stress releases different hormones you know right cortisol, <laughs> and cortisol. Right. yeah and you know what that does right you know screws everything up so at night you can't sleep uh -huh. You know, and if you do it long enough, your sleep cycle completely changes, you know, and, you know, your hormones change, and you're up all night because you're stressed, and even if you sleep, your sleep is not good quality, right? So that, that has a huge detrimental effect in everything, but certainly your brain. Yes. You know, so anyway, right. let's just finish this. We've got a couple more uh, slides to do, and we can just wrap it up. Next one. So again, uh, back to the uh, uh, diamond. And uh, so brain health is, is part of the entire evaluation, including HDL testing, hormones, nutrition. I, mean, I, I look at all those kind of things to support the brain because if you look at the diamond, you, know, you can put the, I have the brain on the bottom, but if you flip it over, the brain's on top, everything is supporting the brain, so to mm -hmm. speak. So you can kind of look at it that way. So all these different factors are tremendously important in supporting the brain. And then I work with other professionals. I mean, I, I do a lot of this work, but I'm not expert in all these things. So I work with psychiatrists, different therapists, nutritionists, trainers, chiropractors. I mean, I mean, anybody that I think can help you uh, to improve your body and health, I'll send you to them. Uh, if there's something that I cannot take care of myself, uh, I'll refer you to those kind of people to really help you. So it's really is a multifactorial, very comprehensive evaluation, not just a brain scan. Brain scan is actually the, the starting point. It's not the end point. And I use that information to really try to help you and kind of retune uh, your brain and the health uh, from that information. Next one. So you, you can't treat what you don't see, okay? This really is a key for entire things medicine, you know? Mm -hmm. If I can't see what's going on with you, I have no idea. How am I gonna treat that, right? right. Same thing with the brain. So the spec scan allows you to see the brain in how it functions. That really is the key, and this is the only tool we have that really does that. Mm -hmm. So for those of you out there who are interested in maybe evaluating this or just want to talk about it, this is the phone number to my office. Uh, please call and set up a consultation, and we can you know spend half an hour talking about it and see if the scan that might be you know beneficial to you in terms of giving you some ideas and giving you some direction into uh, how you might want to you know progress with your life. Next slide. I think that's the last one. Well, you know what I love about this okay. is. Can you go back um, to the go back to the next one? Just yeah, you know, just leave it there. So yeah. Me, you know what I what I love about all of this <laughs> is that um, you're one of the Three only minutes. physicians mm -hmm. in the entire state of Texas. <laughs> if you might be the only no, physician. No, I'm not only. I'm okay, the only one. but you're but one only, of the yeah, only one of physicians. The few, very few. Yeah, um, very that few. does this, yeah. and um, I know that with everything you do, mm -hmm. you treat your your patients 
um, like a partner. Yeah. And that's yeah. another reason I think that <laughs> it, yeah. it sets you apart from mm-hmm. any other physician I've ever come in contact with. So yeah. I thank you so much for thank sharing you. this with thank us. Okay. And um, and now we okay. can. No, you can. Stop. Yeah, we can. Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Hey, now listen, we're back. <laughs> we're not in our normal yeah. studio, yeah, as exactly. you know. We're, yeah. We kind of have been spoiled in that other studio. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong no, with this, this studio, great. because this studio is amazing. We love we love the studios here at yeah. Real News, but um, we've really been spoiled over there at I that know. at that sta- studio, and we'll be there next time. Exactly. So, so. Um, we thank you so mm-hmm. much for tuning in. Yes, Please definitely. share this mm-hmm. once you once you get it, share it, and um, let us know if there is a topic that you'd like us to cover. Mm-hmm. And we are still looking for people that would like to have come on the show and yeah. get Botox. Botox yes, exactly. And if y'all don't do it, <laughs> then I'm going to have them. Okay, shoot, sounds great. Then I'm going to have Should them do it to me. <laughs> okay, so um, if you're interested, yeah. please yeah, let us know. Please let us know. So yeah. until we meet again, mm-hmm. share your love and live healthy. Bye-bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye.